But my parents have always lived near a park and I'd always been able to see a tree out of my bedroom window. So that became another priority. I wanted to see a tree out of my bedroom window. Didn't give a shit if it was on a fucking roundabout. Just a tree. <laughs> But it became very clear early on that I'm not massively suited to country living, having lived in the city centre for so long. I drove along a lovely country lane, lovely country lane, and I saw a white marquee tent. And instead of thinking, oh, somebody's having a lovely summer party, I just thought, oh, someone's been murdered. <laughs> One of the houses I looked at was owned by a couple who were getting divorced. It was very sad. And it was the husband who was showing me around. And I'd realised what was going on straight away and I decided just to go through it very quickly because it was clearly painful for both of them. Now, I don't know if you've ever been shown around a house or have shown somebody around your house, but there's a degree of state and the obvious involved, isn't there, when they say things like, this is the kitchen. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, I call it the biscuit room, but whatever. <laughs> This is the living room. Yeah, it's another biscuit room. <laughs> he took me upstairs to a closed door and he said, this is the master bedroom. I said, great. He said, I'd love to show you in there, but I can't. I said, oh, why not? He said, I can't show you in there because there's a lady crying in there, which is sad, but also quite an unusual way of describing his wife when potentially he's the reason she's crying in the fucking first place. <laughs> but I said to him, look, I, I'm divorced myself. I understand what you're going through. I know that this is horrible for both of you and you just want to get it over and done with so you can both move on with your lives independently. I understand you have my total sympathy. You really do. But I also know that you can cry in the bathroom, so fucking move her. <laughs> The house I looked at was owned by a really posh lady, so I already hated her. That's terrible, isn't it? I'm not supposed to hate anybody. I only hate posh twats. It's fine. <laughs> I was going to say, have we got an in? But I've just remembered where I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're all clapping. There'll be a couple of people at the back from Jesmond going, actually, there are posh people in tonight. <laughs> posh lady was very dramatic in all of her gestures. She said to me, there is underfloor heating throughout. <laughs> said, that doesn't impress me, love. I've got slippers. <laughs> and then as if to hammer it home, she said, there isn't a single radiator in the whole building. And I, because sometimes my mouth kicks in before my brain's had a chance, just said, well, how'd you dry your knickers then? <laughs> and the friend that I was with said, just chuck them on the floor. <laughs> that I liked and I got a survey done and the survey came back and it meant nothing to me at all but luckily I've got a friend who's a builder and he said let me have a look at it and I'll put it into layman's terms for you I said smashing now give us a cheer if you own your own home <laughs> give us a cheer if you rent <laughs> see up until this point I'd only ever rented and I think there are phrases that mean nothing to those of us who rent that the rest of you understand because my friend the builder said there is one thing you will need I said oh yeah what's that he said, you'll need a damp-proof course. And I genuinely said, I haven't got time to go to college. <laughs> Thanks for watching. You know what would be great is if you liked and subscribed. I'm so needy. I'm so sorry. Uh, and why not come and see me live? Uh, the tickets are available at sarahmillican.co.uk. Put the kettle on and settle in.